Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Talks with Tony. Got a question from a young lady. It happens to be another patron. So I guess when I sent this notice out to my patrons, you all wrote uh, right away. It says, good day, Tony. God's blessing and favor always. Hey, thank you so much for that. How can I heal and stop judging myself for being so naive? Saw all the red flags, but didn't act on it or study my gut feeling. It's really funny, but before I made the decision, I heard one of your teachings about love play over in my mind. You won't have to question if it's love or not. You'll know. But I shrugged it off. My last relationship was the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. We had been friends for over 12 years live on two different islands, spoke occasionally because we didn't want to disrespect ourselves and partners. And we both have different religious beliefs. I was a Christian and he's a Muslim. I was under the impression that he was single and I was single for one year working on me. Following your teachings, we got married because of his religion and I didn't want to do anything unlawful. I accepted his faith his faith and then the mask came off don't even know if that was friendship or a fake ship lol but we were four months in then he told me he had a second wife or should i say a first wife who was very much aware of me but i'm not aware of her I broke down crying because I don't think I will ever, ever, ever be able to trust a man in life, period, from this experience. How does one heal from such lies and deceitful behavior? Hmm. Well, I'll tell you this. Okay, lies. Okay, deceitful behavior. We have that. Uh, judging yourself, feeling guilty. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Mm, 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 mm. I'm going to have to write a book on something in this space one day. But you're ignoring the red flags. Listen to me. If you are out here dating and you are ignoring the red flags, listen to me. Stop. Stop. You know, sometimes when I'm driving and we're on like a four hour drive or something, like I got my wife and my kids with me and I'm getting sleepy, I tell my wife, I said, babe, slap me. And oh, she takes great joy. She takes great joy in that. And she literally will just, wow, she'll slap me and it hurts, you know. And I'll say, slap me again. And it hurt me now. And she'll, wow, she'll slap me again. And, and sometimes it's like in the back of my head or something. Or I'll say, pinch me. And I say, oh, harder, pinch me harder. Because, you know, them slaps, it, it gets my blood flowing. It, it gets my face stinging or my head stinging. It gets my blood flowing. It wakes me up. You might literally have to sit here and just look at these red flags and you might have to read it out loud. Um, different religion. Wow. Slap yourself. So it etched in your mind. Different religion. Wow. Slap yourself. That's a red flag. Some people say it's not. Some people, oh, I know somebody, you know, they're this and they're this and they're in this relationship and they are absolutely perfect. For one, you don't know nothing because you're not behind closed doors with them. Two, if you're in that relationship, let's be honest that you may be carrying the title, but you're not living it out. You're not being somebody's not being true to their core beliefs. That's why it's a different religion. If you believe the exact same way, it would be the same religion. It wouldn't be called a different religion. And so when you look at Muslim and Christian, let's just speak to your situation. Muslim believe Jesus was a good man. Muslim believe Jesus was a good man. They do not believe he's the son of God. Christian, the entire Christian belief hinges on the fact that Jesus is the only begotten son of God who came and gave his life so that you may have everlasting life. 
So the crux, you know, I don't know if I'm using that word right. Let's say the foundation, the rock of Christianity is the belief that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life that no one gets to the father, but through him. So how can you be with a Muslim who, yes, you may not have nothing against them. Yes, you may love your brother, your sister. Yes, you may love them as a person. But when it comes to the foundation of belief, if they don't believe the same, then you you're on two different paths. Your trajectory is different. You know what, what your afterlife is different. You know, your belief system is different. And, and maybe that's why some people are against religion. Oh, that's the problem. It divides us. It divides us. But hey, if you've made a personal choice to believe what you believe and they've made a personal choice to believe what they believe, then hey, so be it. So that was one of the red flags. You said we have been friends over 12 years. That's another red flag. I, I talked about that um, not long ago in a video. If y'all have been friends and, and y'all knew each other, but y'all didn't see fit to be together, but instead both of y'all went and got in another relationship, but y'all knew of each other, you're not meant to be. Because if y'all were meant to be, y'all would have been together instead of going and being with someone else. Live on two different islands. I'm guessing you're talking, maybe it's like different islands in the Bahamas, or maybe something about like Trinidad, um, and Tobago. I'm not sure, but spoke on occasion, but spoke occasionally because we didn't want to disrespect ourselves and partners. So he was off limits because you have a partner. He has a partner. And then come to find out you were single for a year working on you and you was under the impression that he was single because he just living that life. You get together, you get married based on his religion, which is uh, a Muslim religion. You didn't want to do anything unlawful because as a Christian, you know, if you're going to be having sex, if it's outside of marriage, then it's fornication. So you got married so that you wouldn't be in sin. But in his belief system, he can have multiple wives. He felt no issues with it. And so he has a wife and he married you. You found out. It all comes back to ignoring the red flags. So when you say, how do I heal? You heal by getting more knowledge, by getting the knowledge. And you heard the knowledge, you heard it and you ignored it. You said, but I shrugged it off and you shrugged it off because of desperation, because of loneliness. So that's why I call this ignorance. Ignorance is bliss because ignorance is bliss until the consequences hit. Ignorance is bliss until the consequences hit. It is no longer blissful when you get punched in the mouth with a cold, harsh reality of the truth of your decisions. So understand that, be very aware of that. And this is how you heal. You cut off all ties. You say four months in and he told you he has a second wife. Or should I say first wife who is very much aware of me, but I'm not aware of her. So you you weren't aware of her. He says she's aware of you. Do you know that she's aware of you? Have you spoke to her? Has she called you? Has she told you? Yes, I'm his wife. I understand you're his wife and I'm OK with it because that is a part of our religion. Um, if I believe that's very pertinent information and you would have stated that if that was the truth. So she may not even know about you. He may be lying to both of you. And now he's telling you to see if you'll be OK with it, to see if he has you up the creek without a paddle. A lot of men, especially grown boys and myself included, have tried to get women up the creek without a paddle. Break the paddle over our leg. Now you got to sink or swim or, or you got to, you know, stay in the boat with us. You either go where we're going and we don't know where we're going. So we lead you to destruction anyways, or you hop out and drown in the high waters. I tried to do that to my wife, get her up the creek without a paddle, get her married, and then go back to being a street dude, living this illegal lifestyle, doing what I want to do. And she walked out. She's two months into marriage. She said, I'm gone. I'm out of here. I'll be sing I'll be a single mother. I will, even though we just got married, I'll file for a divorce and I'll be a single mother. If you want to go back to being the man that you were, um, before I met you or when I met you and, and you vowed to change. If you want to go back to being that man, I'm out of here. She showed me that I could not drown her 
because she taught herself how to swim. If you come to my seminar before, maybe you've heard me say that. So you got to show him you know how to swim, that he does not have you trapped, that you are not up the creek without a paddle and that you are out of there. You are out of there. You from an island. I don't know what island, but I know if you from an island, you know about Usain Bolt. And that's what you got to show him, that you Usain Bolt, track shoes, put on those track shoes and come out those blocks and set a record time for how fast a woman could get away from a man and chalk it up and, and, and slap yourself three times. Now, don't do any more to yourself. You know, don't 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 cut yourself or anything like that. But you take that hand, you know, take that hand and you need to spit on it. Get your little whoosh, Get you a little spit on it, and I want you to just get you a good, good slap. I mean, you, it need the cup, that palm need to hit right there, and just get it in your head. You know, sometimes we got to feel it to heal it. We got to feel it to heal it. You got to get this, and I'm speaking metaphorically, but I'm also kind of speaking literally, if you need to. But you need to feel this here lesson. You need to get this lesson in you. And so if you don't want to feel it physically like that, Sign up for coaching. Sign up for coaching. You know what? Because that's $150 an hour. You do four sessions, that's $600. Your pocket going to feel it. And you're going to say, you know what? Whew, I ain't got this. I, ain't, I don't have this kind of money to be spending. I'm not going to do anything else stupid again. You got to feel this some kind of way. It may be feeling it through a season of loneliness to where you're hurting. you lonely. You want a date. You want love. You want this. But... You got to sit in your mess until this lesson sinks in that says never ignore the signs. Never, ever again see a red flag and ignore it or not address it. Hey, this is Tony Gaskins. Thank you so much for sending in your message. If you have a question, please send it in to inbox at TonyGaskins.com. This is also on my podcast, so if you don't oftentimes get to YouTube to see the video, you can download the podcast, uh, Tony Gaskins Show. If you're listening on the podcast and, and you want to see the video, you can go to my YouTube, click subscribe, and you can watch this in video. But thank you so much for submitting your questions. Thank you for watching or listening. We will talk soon.